smartphones. The good, the bad, and the ugly truth. Number 10, reduced brain function. Your phone is making you stupid. That's right. The mere presence of a smartphone in the room with volunteers taking tests harmed their intellect. The tests were simple tasks, like remembering a phone number and logical reasoning questions about categories of things. The shocking result? People who left their phones in another room performed better than volunteers who had their phones face down on a desk or put away in a bag or pocket. Why? Simply ignoring your phone takes a toll on your brain. Even if the participants told the researchers that they hadn't been thinking about their devices, the researchers believed that their brains were spending energy in the background resisting the temptation to check their phones. Next time you have a standardized test, leave your cell phone as far away as possible. Maybe go through a short technology fast for the week beforehand, if you can. This is making me want to can my smartphone already, but there's still more info to come. Number nine, phantom phone vibrations. Phantom vibrations or ringing is a false belief that your phone is ringing or has received a notification even when it hasn't. Shockingly, about 80% of people have experienced false vibrations and around 30% have heard ringing that simply did not exist coming from their phones. The human brain manages to fantasize about being contacted. Wild! Of course, you are more likely to feel a phantom vibration the more often you use your phone. It's only natural that your brain will start to expect that it's going to get notified every few minutes and make up a phantom vibration if you don't give it an actual buzz. Number eight, antisocial behavior and depression. According to research done by Dr. Jean M. Twenge at San Diego State University, there is a correlation between mobile phone overuse and depression. Now this correlation doesn't necessarily imply causation, but at the same time that smartphones started becoming ubiquitous, there was also an increase seen in depressive symptoms and even suicides among adolescents in 2010. The theory behind this research is that adolescents who are being raised as a generation of avid smartphone users are spending so much time on their devices that they forego actual human interaction, which is essential to mental health. Smartphone time feels kind of like socializing and it sort of replaces social activity, but it doesn't quite scratch the itch so it can lead to feelings of loneliness in spite of the constant buzz of activity. According to Elliot Berkman, another psychology professor at the University of Oregon, the constant checking of our phones is caused by reward learning and the fear of missing out. Berkman explains that habits are a product of reinforcement learning, one of our brain's most ancient and reliable systems. For many, using our mobile phone has become ingrained as a habit that we can't quite shake and we instinctively pick up our phones to check when we see any notification. But constant FOMO leads to poor mental health. Smartphones being windows into other people's lives only increases the problem. Number seven, sleep habits. Using a cell phone before bed can cause insomnia, according to a study by scientists from the Karolinska Institute and Uppsala University in Sweden and from Wayne State University in Michigan. The study showed that this is due to the minor amount of radiation coming from the phone, but the bright white or faintly blue light signals to our brains that it's not time to sleep. Smartphones disrupt the circadian rhythm and lead people to not be able to fall asleep when they need to. Astonishingly, 80% of 18 to 24 year olds sleep with their phones right next to them. This wouldn't be that bad in and of itself, but many check their phones in the middle of the night whenever they get up to use the bathroom. The sharp blue light can shock the brain and confuses it, leading to less restful sleep. Additionally, 70% of people check their phones first thing in the morning within an hour of getting up. If you don't put your phone on silent, the pings and buzzes during the night harm your sleep. The light when you check them harms your sleep even more, and the morning routine to check your phone puts you in an unproductive state immediately. And yes, one in three mobile phone owners would rather give up sex than their phones, and plenty of them stop to check their phones during intimate time with their partner. Cell phones and bedrooms do not mix. Number six, nomophobia. This is a real psychological term. It means fear of being without your smartphone or of having your phone die so that you can no longer use it. 
many people experience one or more of the symptoms associated with nomophobia. Here is a list of some of the things you might notice if you are separated from your phone and you have acute nomophobia. Grabbing for your phone when it's not there, annoyance or irritation, general discomfort, general anxiety, increased heart rate or blood pressure, shortness of breath, even nausea or dizziness, depression or panic in severe cases. Studies show that 58% of men and 47% of women suffer from nomophobia and suffer from anxiety when they are missing their smartphone. Sadly, 44% of people have stated that they have become very anxious when they lose their phones and become phoneless for an entire week. Number five, texting and driving. Here's the raw statistic. About 20,000 motor vehicle fatalities between 2012 and 2017 were related to distracted driving. 20,000 people died because other motorists were texting or calling, Snapchatting or tweeting. There have been a few famous cases where drivers were making live video of themselves driving and then immediately crashed. One viral example is Onasi Olio Rojas, a young man from Rhode Island who streamed himself driving recklessly at high speeds until he crashed into a garbage truck in 2016. Teen drivers are especially at risk. Over one and a half million crashes in 2013 involved talking or texting on a cell phone. This number is not going down. The combination of distractions and inexperience make this extra dangerous. The dangers of driving and multitasking will continue to rise as more technology is integrated into cars. Teens who texted more frequently were also likely to engage in other risky behaviors, like driving without a seatbelt, driving while intoxicated. And remember in the first fact how even the presence of a phone can slightly impede brain function. Cell phone use can reduce brain activity by as much as 37%. These kids are not paying attention to where they are driving, and the consequences are fatal. Self-driving cars may take away this danger just as it hits a breaking point, but human beings are dying in gruesome accidents because of the way that smartphones hijack the brain. Number four, brain cancer. For every 100 hours that you spend talking on the phone, you increase the risk of brain cancer by as much as 5%. That's right, the same radiation that keeps you up at night can actually cause cancer. A World Health Organization study of more than 5,000 brain tumors that occurred between 2000 and 2004 over 13 different countries reported some key facts. Top users of cell phones have a doubled risk of malignant tumors of the brain compared to people who rarely or never use cell phones. The study did show that making one call a week for six months had no significant effect on risk for brain cancer but most people today use their phone to make calls far more often than that. The pulsed microwave-like radiation from cell phones disrupts living cells and causes cancer. Be careful, limit your use. Number three, young children. Time Magazine published an article earlier this year titled, Too Much Screen Time Can Have Lasting Consequences for Young Children's Brains. That should make you sit up and pay attention because on average, toddlers spent upwards of three hours a day in front of screens. After all, how often have you seen a parent shut up their whining child by sticking a tablet or a smartphone in front of them and letting them play games on it? Growing data suggests that exposing young children to too much time in front of a screen like a TV, smartphone, or computer can have negative effects on their development, including issues with memory, attention, and language skills. That's right, we could be giving the next generation ADD because we stick them in front of screens as infants and toddlers. Even a half hour per day of smartphone exposure in babies is associated with a 49% increase in expressive speech delays. In one study conducted by the University of Toronto, 20% of one-year-olds had about a half an hour a day sitting playing with a smartphone, and most of those babies ended up being in the bottom 10% of speech milestones by 18 months. Number two, disgusting phones. Research from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine at Queen Mary in 2011 showed that one out of every six cell phones is contaminated with fecal matter. And among those, some even had harmful bacteria, such as Streptococcus or E. coli, which can result in fever, vomiting, and diarrhea. 
It's also been said that our phones have more germs than a toilet seat. And because you're constantly touching your phone, all that bacteria can get on you. But bacteria is less of a concern than viruses. Those are more likely to actually spread to your nose or mouth from swiping on your screen and then touching your face. In theory, we should all be using alcohol wipes more often to clean our phone screens every day. In practice, our use of smartphones is like carrying around a petri dish and putting it next to our faces every so often. So what are we supposed to do? Here's the number one... Uh, hang on, sorry. I just got a text, just a second. Oh, yeah, what was I saying? How to fight back against smartphone addiction. Well, click like, subscribe, you know the drill, and let me know in the comments. Do you suffer from smartphone addiction? How do you fight back? Number one, fighting back. How do we fight back? Billions of people around the world use their phones too much. There are even more smartphones in existence than people on planet Earth. There are a few tactics, obviously, the simplest one is to leave phones out of our lives as much as possible. They don't need to be omnipresent. You don't need to respond to every notification right away. But this is a difficult first step for a lot of people who are already addicted. Psychology researchers have come up with a few stepping stone solutions. You can first turn your phone screen to grayscale mode to make your phone more boring to look at. See if that has an effect on how often you stay on your phone after picking it up to check something. A second step is putting your phone on airplane mode or even just turning it off for extended periods of time. If there's a particular app that sucks up a lot of concentration, you can remove it. Examples include social media apps like Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. It's not like you need to see what your friends are doing at all times. There are also many apps you can download to track your smartphone usage possibly shut off your phone after a certain amount of activity. Having group accountability is a decent solution as well. You can let a friend change your passcode for the day and only get your phone active again by having a face-to-face -face conversation with that person. In the end, it's up to you to want to take back control of your brain from powerfully addictive smartphones.